So today what we are going to do is we are going to do a lot of MCQs, a lot of multiple choice problems covering chapter 18. OK, so the last chapter, we will try to cover the whole chapter with multiple choice problems. So the first equation that I want you to know is this equation. So here what it says is that we can calculate current by dividing the charge, amount of charge through the time it takes. So charge divided by time gives you current. In other words, you can think of a wire. Okay, let's think of a wire. And here is a cross section of the wire. Okay, a cross section. So the amount of charge which passes through this cross section, if I call that amount of charge Q, and if it takes delta T seconds to pass through this, then the current through this point is given by delta Q over T. So it is the amount of charge passing through a cross section in unit time. So here is a circuit diagram. Here we have a battery. Here we have a battery. And you know the symbol of the battery, right? So this is a single cell. Battery is a couple of cells. So the long side, the long line represents the positive side of the battery and the short line represents the negative side of the battery. And current flows from the positive side. That means high potential. So this is high V, high value of voltage. Current flows from high potential to low potential this way. And current is the movement of positive charges. Okay, so current gives the number of positive charges over time. So it is the direction of positive charges. What about the direction of negative charges or electrons? So if current is this way, electrons should go this way, right? It's the same thing, but opposite direction. So this is electron flow, this is current flow. So we will do a few problems from this equation. And the units, what, what are the units of current? Units of current should be, so this is charge, charge is in coulombs, right? Time is in seconds. So coulombs per second, or we call it amperes, capital A. Coulombs per second or amperes. Okay, so you're okay with this equation. This is how current is defined. It is the amount of charge passing through a cross-section per unit time. So then we have something called Ohm's law. Ohm's law. So it gives us the current in a circuit. So it helps us to calculate the current in a circuit. If you know the voltage of the battery, V. So this is the voltage of the battery. If you know the voltage and the resistance in the circuit, so here is a resistor. If you know the voltage and the resistor resistance, then this equation allows you to calculate I. Resistance from the word, you know the meaning, right? Resistance is, it is resisting the current flow. Higher the resistance, lower the current, right? So when your resistance is higher, the current which goes through the circuit is lower. Resistance is 
something which tries to stop the current. It is a barrier for the current flow. So in the last equation, this equation, we have the resistance. So same R here. So here we are going to learn how to calculate R. Dep depending on the problem, you will see different values for resistors. So how do they do that? By changing three things. People can change the material of the resistor. People can change the length of the resistor. And also people can change the cross-sectional area of the resistor. So resistor is, uh, you can think of a resistor as a tiny piece of wire. Okay, you can think of a resistor as a tiny piece of wire. So by changing the material, you can make change the resistance. By changing the length of this tiny piece, you can change the resistance. By increasing the cross section or by decreasing the cross section also. Uh, sorry, this is, what is this? Cross section. It's cross sectional area. By even uh, changing the cross sectional area, you can change the resistance. So I said by changing the material, you can change the resistance. So changing the material means the resistivity. So what is resistivity? Resistivity is a property of the material. How resistive your material is? Some, some materials are not that resistive. Some materials are very resistive. So it is a property of the material. So usually your resistivity will be a constant at a given temperature. Okay, at a given temperature, it is a constant. But if your ch temperature changes, then your resistivity changes. Okay. It is a constant only at a given temperature. For example, let's say. So uh, I got a question in the chat. How is resistivity different than resistance? So that's so I'm going to talk about I'm talking about it right now. Okay. So it is so like I said, resistivity is a property of the material. It is a property, so it doesn't. So resistivity rho does not depend on the dimensions of the material. For example, let's say you have this huge fat piece of gold. Okay, and also you have a tiny tiny, tiny, like thin piece of gold. So both of them will have the same resistivity because it is a prop, it is a property of the material. It doesn't depend on the size. Okay. It is the, it is a property of the material. It does not depend on the length or the area. But resistance depends on everything. It depends on the material. It depends on the material and the dimensions of it. So if we compare this fat piece of gold and thin piece of gold, resistance will be different. Resistance will be different. R will be different. Resistivity rho will be the same. Okay. So are you okay with that? Resistivity is a property of the material. Resistance, it depends on the material and the dimensions of the material. So are you okay with that? So resistivity, I said it depends on the material, right? So usually at a given temperature, let's say at room temperature, uh, at room 
is this? This M. At room temperature, the value of resistivity will be a constant. So, like it will be the same resistivity at the same time, at the same temperature. However, when the temperature increases for a conductor, so usually we work with conductors because we are not going to send, uh, resistors are usually made up of different types of conductor materials. So in the metals, in, in metals or conductors, resistivity changes with the temperature, how? This way, it increases with the temperature. So this is something that is nice to know. These are three simple conceptual problems. Do them and tell me the answer in the chat. The direction of conventional current is the positive charges, right? Okay. The total amount of charge that passes through a wire's full cross section at, a, at any point per unit time. What is it? It, it should be current. Right, so we re remember this equation, delta Q over T. So this equation defines the current. So the amount of charges which flow through a cross section per unit time is given as current. Uh, Coulombs per second is same as the charge of this is coulombs per second, right? Coulombs per second is same as an ampere. Okay, so th these are easy, right? Okay, now let's go one level high. <laughs> so still these are easy, but these are from that equation uh, which has resistance. Resistance is resistivity, length, divided by the area. So this is the equation. So do these three and tell me the answer. The resistance of a circular rod, one centimeter in diameter. So they have given us the diameter. So the diameter is one centimeters. Length is 45 meters. And they have also given us the resistivity, 1.4, 10 to the negative 8. They're asking us to calculate resistance. We know resistance is given by rho L over A. Rho is in standard units, so we can just plug it in. So in this part, I will uh, substitute with units so that we will see what units of resistance is. And then you need L, L is in standard units as well, 45 meters. Then you need the cross-sectional area. So they say that this is a circular rod, right? So the cross-sectional area is area of a circle, pi, R squared. So pi, so what is your R? They have given the diameter. Therefore, the radius should be half a centimeter. But we need to convert this to standard units. So centimeters converted to standard units. Meters is 10 to the negative 2. Then you have to take, you have to take the power two of it because it's pi r squared. So when you do this, you should get the answer 0 0.0080 ohms. So the unit of resistance is ohms. Ohms, okay? The symbol is capital omega. Okay, this, this thing. So the, uh, the length 
of a wire is doubled and the radius is doubled. So this is a problem which has two situations. So when we have problems like this, you all know my usual method. I, you write the first scenario before this doubling happens. So before everything happens, your resistance will be rho L divided by the cross-sectional area. So since they are talking about a radius, I will write in terms of pi r squared. Okay. So this is my first equation. Then what happens? Then what they do is they double the length. So my new new resistance. They haven't changed the material, so it's the same material, same row. They have doubled the length, so my new length is 2 times L. And they have also doubled the radius. So pi, my radius is also doubled. It's 2R to the power 2. Okay, this is my new radius, 2 times R. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the second equation a little bit. So if I bring this 2 to the front, rho L. And in the denominator, I have 2 to the power 2, 4, right? 4 pi r squared. What can you say about this part? It is same as our uh, initial R, right? It is same as our initial resistance. So 2 over 4 is half. 2 over 4 is half. And this is my old resistance. So what has happened? My resistance has uh, is half of what it was before. Is half as large. Answer is C. So the last one, the resistivity of most common metals. So metal is a conductor. Metals are conductors and we know how the resistivity varies with temperature, right? Resistivity is true. It increases with the temperature. We saw it in the previous slide, right? So your answer is uh, B. So here are three problems, which is from the current equation. So what is current equation? This one. So you will need this equation and also you will need the value of this charge value of an electron charge of an electron so these are the two things that i give so i want you to use these to find the answers for these three problems uh, what current is flowing so this is a direct substitution they have given us q and also they have given us a time. We know current is the amount of charge passing through per unit time. So your charge is 0.67 coulombs and time is in seconds, 0 0.3 seconds. So they are in standard units, right? So once you divide the two, you will get the answer as 2.2 coulombs per second or amperes. Coulombs per second is same as amperes. So your answer is A. So in the ne next part, the problem becomes a little hard. So instead of charge, they are saying this many protons is passing uh, in this time. But we know charge is defined by 
sorry, current is defined by the amount of charge per time, right? So we need to find the charge. So we need we know the number of protons. So how to find the charge of all these protons? You multiply the number of protons by the charge of one single proton. So the charge of one single proton is 1.6 10 to the negative 19. So the number of pro number of protons is this. When you multiply it by the charge of one single proton, you get the total charge, right? Then you divide it by the time, 15 seconds. So here, again, you get coulombs per second. So your answer is 2.13 10^-6/ok so 2.13, so I'm going to write this 10 to the negative 7 as 10 to the negative 6 times 10 to the negative 1. Because I know 10 to the negative 6 is micro. So this is micro. So you get microamps and you have 2.13 times 10 to the negative 1. So 0 0.213, right? 0 0.213 microamps or how to convert it in a different way so let's say you had 2.13 10 to the negative 7 how do you convert this to micro you divide it by But, or multiply by, you divide it by 10 to the positive 6, right? Oh, uh, negative 6, sorry. You divide it by 10 to the negative 6. Then you get micro amps. Okay, so your answer is C. So the last one in this slide. So it is the same thing as the previous problem, but they are talking about electrons. But it doesn't matter, right? Because they are asking us for the current. We know current is same as the electron flow, but the side is different. So your answer is anyway going to be a positive one. So your current is the amount of charge per unit time. So your charge is number of electrons times the charge of one electron. So this gives you the total charge divided by the time it takes. So this, this will give you the total current which is uh, 1.2 10 to the negative 4 amperes. So do you have anything similar? Yes. The first answer has 1.12 uh, something in the answer, but in milliamps. So how to convert this to milliamps? You divide it by 10 to the negative 3. Or what's the normal way that you do uh, conversions? This is amperes. So you don't you have you want to get rid of amperes, right? So one ampere is 10 to the 3 milliamperes. Amperes get cancelled, you are left with milliamperes. So if what I did 
before is confusing, you can use this way. So you get 1.2. When these two simplify, get simplified, you get 10 to the negative 1 milliamps. In other words, 0 0.12 milliamps. So are you okay with these three problems? So in this, in this problem, we only use this equation. We use the definition of current to get current. You're good, right? Shall I move to the next one? Okay, so here we have Ohm's law. You remember Ohm's law? So I like to remember Ohm's law like this, V equals IR, but the actual Ohm's law is I is equal to V over R. So you can remember whatever you like, and this is in the formula sheet. One of this, I think this one is in the formula sheet. Okay, so I got a question in the chat to explain a unit conversion if I have time. So if anyone uh, wants me to explain, I can go back and explain another unit conversion. Anyone who needs, maybe I'll explain the second one, second problem. Anyone? You're good with unit conversions? You can send me privately. If I get one more, I will go and explain it. <laughs> I'll go. So here, I'll explain the first, uh, second one only, okay? This one. So what we got was 2.13, 10 to the negative 7 amperes. Let's say I want to convert this uh, to microamps. So here we wanted to convert it to microamps, right? So what is the formal way of doing this? So I don't want amperes, right? So I want to get rid of amperes. So therefore I'm going to write A in the denominator. In that way, this A will get canceled, right? And I want the answer in microamps. So I'm going to write it in uh, the numerator. So this way, this A will get cancelled with this A and I'll be left with microamps. Okay, now the conversion factor. How many one, mic one ampere is how many microamps? Ten to the power what? Ten to the power six, right? So there are 10 to the power 6 microamps in 1 ampere. Micro is small. So you have 10 to the power 6 of microamps in 1 ampere. Ampere is the big unit. Okay. So when we calculate, when we do this, amperes get cancelled. And your answer will be 2.13. So 10 to the negative 7. Here you have positive 6. What happens? You know, when you multiply indices, they add together, right? Negative 7 plus 6 becomes 10 to the negative 1. So negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. Microamps. So if I take this negative 1 and write it nicely, I get 0 0.213. So you're okay with that, right? Okay, now let's go back. So the, here is the Ohm's law. Try to do these three problems and tell me the answer. I will start it. Uh, so they're asking what potential difference is required to cause 
four amps to flow through a resistor, resistance of this much. So it is a direct substitution. So they are asking about B, B equals IR. I is four amperes. Resistance is 330 ohms. So both are in standard units. So when you multiply this, you should get 1320 ampere ohms is also given by the unit volts. So this is volts. In other words, it's a voltage. So you give voltage or a potential difference. Potential difference. Using uh, the unit volts. So your answer is D. So this is a direct substitution. But the next problem, it becomes a little harder. It is, you have to directly substitute it, but there are a few more steps involved with that problem. So let's do part by part. So they're asking how uh, the uh, same as the previous problem, they have given us voltage of the battery and also they have given us the resistor, resistance. So we know when we have V, when we have V and R, we can find the current, right? So we have enough information to find the current, but they're not asking for the current. They are asking us to find the number of electrons flowing through the wire in one minute. So this is my thought process. So what I'm trying to thinking of doing is I'm going to use Ohm's law. In other words, this equation to find I. But and what when I know I. I can use this equation, right? I is equal to delta Q over delta T. I can use this equation to find Q or the charge which flows through in one minute. So once I know Q in one minute, then I, and I can calculate how many electrons are there in delta Q? So that is the way that I'm going to do the problem. So since most of you have got the answer, I think you all follow the same way. So let, let me calculate I. So I is given by V over R, V is 12, R is 100. So here you get 0 0.12 amperes. So we just calculated the current. So if we know the current, we can find the charge moving through in one minute. So using the second equation, this one, I can find the current, I, I can find the charge. So charge delta Q, is given by I times delta T, right? I is 0 0.12 amperes. And the time is what? Time is one minute. We know we have to substitute standard units. So one minute is 60 seconds, right? So this gives you the charge flowing through the wire in a minute. So I have got the answer as 7.3 coulombs. Ampere seconds is coulombs. Charge is coulombs. Okay, now we have done part two also. Now we know the charge. Now we can find the number of electrons. How many electrons gave this charge? How to find it? So number of electrons 
is the total charge. Total charge is 7.6. And you divide it by charge of one electron. So if you do this, you get the number of electrons, right? Total charge, total charge of the uh, total charge which flow in one minute, when you divide it by the charge of a single electron, it gives you the total number of electrons. So you divide 7.2 by charge of a single electron, 1.6. 10 to the negative 9. 10 to the negative 19. So both are coulombs. Total charge is also in coulombs. Charge of electron is also in coulombs. So you will get the number of electrons. Mm, so I have got the answer 4.5. 10 to the positive 19. So does this part make sense? Does this question make sense? Yes, right? So suddenly the question got hard, right? So instead of just substituting, they, are, they, they want you to do the substitution and two more parts. So there were three calculations in this problem. Now the last one. So in this problem, they have uh, given some parameters of this uh, thing, 22 something. So they have said the L is 10 meters. Also, they have given the radius as 0 0.321 millimeters. And also they have given the resistivity of nichrome. Nichrome is the material that it's made up of. What else have they given? So basically they have given us all the things that we need to find the resistance, right? So they are asking us to calculate the current going through this thing if it is connected to a 12 volt battery. So in other words, they are asking us to, they, they are asking us to calculate I and we know I is V over R. And they have given us V and also they have given us everything to calculate R. So let's calculate R. R is uh, rho L times L divided by A. Rho is 100, 10 to the negative 8. L is 10 meters. A is pi R squared. R is in millimeters, so we have to convert it to meters, 10 to the negative 3. So this thing will give you R value of 30, resistance of 30.89 ohms. So we need I. So we need everything. We have everything to find I now. I is V over R. V is 12 volts. And R is 30.89 ohms. So you will get the answer as 0 0.388 uh, amperes. Since these are in standard units, you will get it in amps. So answer is C. So are you okay with these three problems? So any questions from this? So up to now, we have uh, covered questions from current, Ohm's law and resistance. So you're all good with this, right? So next go to the next part. So here we are going to do power. 
So this is also a very important part of this lesson. What is power? So if you remember physics 121, you learn that power, sorry, power is given by the energy, energy dissipated or used in a unit time. So it's energy over time. If you look at the units, it should be joules per second, right? Standard units are joules per second. Energy is measured in joules. Time is measured in seconds. And you call the standard unit, which is joules per second, watts. Okay, so this is watts, not volt. This is watts. And you use capital W. So this is the standard equation or the definition of power. And we have a special equation for electrical power. So for the inner circuit, how to find power? So in a circuit, power is given by the current which is flowing through the circuit times the potential difference. Okay. So this is the main equation. And we can derive these two by using Ohm's law. V equals IR. So if we substitute for V, if we put IR for V, we get this equation. If we substitute for I, if we put the value of I as V over R, we get this equation. So it is the same equation. We are just substituting V equals IR, V and I to get different forms. So you can use them whenever you like. They all give the same answer. So are you okay up to this point? So there are three equations and all the three are the same. And the units of power is in watts. Watts per hour. So I got one answer. Can I have any? Oh, yeah. So you all know it. So this is the unit. This is a unit. It is, this is an unit. This, uh, I don't know, unit of energy. So a lot of people get confused with power because this has this watt in it. But this is energy. So let's see why this is energy and why we use this. So if this is energy, let's use the power equation, the standard definition. So this is the definition of power. And if I find energy, Energy is given by power times delta T, right? So energy is power times delta T. So usually, okay, normally when we do problems, we like to use standard units. So if we use standard units, for example, the standard unit of power is watts. Standard unit of time is seconds. So when you use watts and seconds, you will get your energy in joules. Okay. However, so there's a big however. However, the problem is in real world applications, the energy that you get in joules is a huge value. So the amount that you usually consume in homes or buildings is a huge value in joules. So they don't anymore use joules in uh, real world applications for electrical energy. Instead, they use something called kilowatts per hour. So let's see what this is. So instead of giving power in watts, okay, 
instead of giving power in watts, if you use kilowatts per power, power, for power, so it is basically you are using different units instead of standard units. You use kilowatts per for power. And you use hours for time. Then you get your energy in kilowatts, kilowatt hours. So do you get how we got kilowatt hours? So instead of using standard units for power and time, if you use kilowatts for power and hours for time, you get your energy in kilowatt hours. So are you okay with that part? But it, this is real energy. So, uh, so in the next question, I'm asking you to calculate how many joules is one kilowatt hour. So instead of writing it in kilowatt hours, what I really want you to do is write in what seconds or joules. Do the unit conversion and tell me the answer. Is it C or D? It is D. So one kilowatt hours is energy when you represent it in weird units. Joule says the same thing when we represent all of this in standard units. So let's convert this to standard units. So for standard units, we need watts, right? Not kilowatts. So how to convert to watts? Okay. So you need to get rid of kilowatts, right? So one kilowatt is how many watts? Thousand watts. What about hours? So you need to convert hours also to this hour. So you need to divide one hour to hours. You need in seconds, right? How many seconds are in one hour? 60 times 60, right? So 60 times 60 seconds in one hour. So when you do this, so kilowatts will get cancelled, hours will get cancelled. You will be left with 60 times 60 times 1000 watt seconds. We know watts, it's, watts is joules per second and times seconds you get the answer in joules. 3, 0, 0, 0. So can you see that this value is huge? Imagine your electrical uh, bill was given in joules. There's going to be so many zeros and you it's so hard to count it. That's why they, your energy consumption is usually given in kilowatt hours. So your unit is in joules. They, even if you knew the correct unit, if you knew that this is energy, you should get the answer. So do this quickly and tell me the answer. So how much energy does a 100 watt bulb use in 8 hours? So they are asking for the energy. So basically if we uh, what we have to do is P times delta T, right? So if your answers were in joules, you have to uh, plug the standard units. However, they are asking in kilowatt hours, right? That means you have to calculate your energy in kilowatt hours. So this is the formula. Formula means you are going to plug your power in kilowatts instead of watts, so they have given in watts. So this is watts in kilowatts, just like grams in kilograms. 
So this is in kilowatt. And they have given the time in hours. So it's easy. Eight hours. So you get 800, 10 to the negative 3 kilowatt hours, KWH, simple K, capital W, simple H. It is 0 0.8, right? So your answer is B. So the next question. So it is a very similar question, but there are two extra parts to the problem. What are the two extra parts? They haven't given you the power, right? But they have given you enough information to calculate power. So let's calculate power. P, they have given the current and the resistance. So we can use this, right? This equation, I squared R, so P is given by I squared R, I is 14, you take the square of it, and R is 8, so I get the power uh, as 1568 watts. And also they have given us the number of hours. So we have the power, now can we calculate E? Energy in kilowatt hours. So to calculate energy in kilowatt hours, you need your power in kilowatts. So we have to convert this to kilowatts. So this is my power in kilowatts. And the time, they have given it, 24 hours. So this will give you the total energy consumption in kilowatt hours. So this is my first part, this is my second part. There's another part, right? They're asking about the price. So here they are saying one kilowatt hour is 0 0.09 dollars. So what is the total price? Total cost. Total cost is 1 kilowatt hour is this much. What is the price of 37 kilowatt hours? Sorry, kilowatt hours. So you multiply it. This is the value of 1. You multiply it by the amount of energy. So 3, 2. So this gives you $3.39. Quickly do these two and tell me the answer. This I is it. It's the maximum current. So it is P E. Uh, they have given, given the resistance and the power. Resistance and power. Asking for the current. So I'm going to use this equation. P equals I squared times R. So I is given by P divided by R and you take the square root. Your P is 1 over 4 and your R is 200. So you should get the answer 0 0.035 amps. Next part, a bulb, a lamp uses 150 watts. If it's used at 120, what's the current? So they have given us V and P to find I. So we can use the first equation, right? So your I will be P over V. P is 150, V is 120, so your answer will be 1.25 amps. So these were two direct substitutions. So are you okay with this? So we have done everything up to direct, uh, like 
under direct current. So now we are going to move to AC current. This is the part that a lot of people uh, found a little confusing, but it's very easy. So let's go through it. So what is an AC current and what is the difference between an AC current and a DC current? So DC current, so let me redraw the same circuit with a DC, DC source. So here is my battery, uh, here is my bulb. Here is a battery. So a normal chemical cell or a battery is a source of direct current or a direct voltage. In other words, direct means it will send a constant voltage or so it's a constant voltage source uh, throughout the time. And also it, it, it always flows in one direction. It flows from positive to negative. So if your V is like this, your current is also like that. It will be also a constant value along, uh, along the circuit. However, uh, in AC sources, your current flows both ways. At, at the first, like when it, uh, at a moment it will flow this way and in the next moment it will be flowing this way. So this is alternating current. Alternating means it alternates the direction. Okay, so your voltage and the current, so both voltage and current will follow a shape like this. There will be positive and negative values. This is like the zero. There will be positive and negative values. And also, can you see that this varies? It's not a constant value. See, it increases, then decreases. Therefore, it becomes hard to like, tell what is the voltage and the current of an AC, uh, AC circuit or for AC current. Therefore, they have two values to symbolize voltage and also the current. So one value is the peak, peak value. So there is something called peak voltage, which we use the letter uh, V naught. This is for the peak. In the same way, I said voltage and current both follow the same trend, right? Current, the maximum value the current can have is called the peak current. We use the letter I naught. Okay. And there's something else. Because this varies so much, they have defined something called the RMS. RMS means root mean square. It is like the average. Okay. So average, it's like the average value. Average for the RMS value is given by these two symbols. IRMS, you use IRMS or VRMS uh, to denote the average values, okay? So in DC, you had I, O, V, just I and V. But in AC, you have I naught, V naught to show the peak values. And to show the average values, you have IRMS and VRMS. And in your formula sheet, they have given these two formulas. IRMS and VRMS. How to calculate the two? Or what is the connection between the peak and the average? Yeah, so I got a question. Isn't the average I and V equal to zero? So if you just take the average, 
average means this plus this divide by two, you get zero, right? But this RMS is, is like an average that uh, you have defined, they have defined so that you don't get zero, root mean square. So what they do is they square it, then take the mean and then they take the square root. You don't need all of that, but it is not a zero. Okay, so it is a value like this. It is usually a positive, it is always a positive value. The, it just gives an average. Something like an average. Okay, so this is the uh, connection between I note and we are uh, IRMS. You take the peak value divided by root 2. So these are in your formula sheet. So are you okay with these two? Yes. So now this is the confusing part. So before uh, we go forward, there's something that you have to know. In alternate currents, okay, in AC circuits, they always, okay, whenever they give power, voltage, or current, Okay, whenever they just say this is the power and the voltage of this AC circuit. Okay, whenever they talk about power, voltage and I, they always talk about the average or the RMS values. So they are always talking about RMS or the average values. Okay, so that is something that you need to know. It is the standard. So in the next problem, you will see it. So how to calculate the average power? So you know the power equations, right? This stuff, what we did before for DC. So power is I, uh, I times V, or you can use one of all three of these equations. But to get the average power, you need to use average I and the average V, right? That means you have to use I RMS and V RMS. So if you substitute for IRMS and VRMS, you will see. So when you substitute I naught over root 2, V naught over root 2 in this equation, you will end up getting a half fact. That, that half comes from this root 2 and this root 2 multiplying together. So these stuff are not in your formula sheet. Okay, this stuff is not in your formula sheet, but they have given this. You don't even need them, right? Because we know average power is IRMS times VRMS. If you need to write it in terms of peak values, this is how you do it. If you need the maximum power, then you will be multiplying the two peak values. So is resistance always constant? Yes. So in your problems, you will see it as constant all the time. So here are two problems from AC. And in your worksheet, the order is jumbled. So do in this order. So last one first. So do in this order, not the order in your worksheet. Do this first and then this one. Quickly do it. We have only three minutes, two minutes. So, like I said before, if whenever they say AC, it is the standard to give RMS values. Okay, they always give the RMS or the average values. So that's the standard. 
they always gives this 500 is the average value. This 120 is the RMS value. Okay, so that's the thing that you have to remember. If it's AC, they always talk about RMS or the average. So if I do this, they have given us the P average. 500 is the P average. We know P is given by IRMS times VRMS, right? So they have given the average power, which is 500. Uh, and your IRMS is what you need to find. V is, VRMS is 120. So your I is 500 divided by 120. So what do you get? 4.167 amps. So answer is A. Okay, so the important thing is that they give average of the RMS values. So in the next part, they are asking for the peak value, right? So it's the same question, but instead of the norm RMS current, they ask for the peak current. So we know I RMS is I naught over root 2. So your I naught or the peak value is root 2 times I RMS. So root 2 times this value 4.167. So I think you should get 5.9, 5.9. Okay, so the important thing is what they, whatever they give in an AC circuit, unless they specifically tell is the RMS or the average values. Okay, 